Welcome to CNET's The Fix. The show about DIY tech and how-tos. I'm Donald Bell. And I'm Sharon Vakin. This week, it's all about the smart home. Wireless connections that allow us to control our appliances, lights, and other comforts of home from just about anywhere. It offers a lot of convenience, and there's also some pretty cool tech involved. We're going to start off with a DIY trick on how to control things around your home using your smartphone. Let's check it out. This DIY is all about taking an otherwise boring piece of furniture and making it a whole lot smarter. We're making a smart nightstand with built-in power, wireless charging, and NFC. And that NFC, or near field communication, will allow me to tap my phone to the nightstand and automatically turn on my Philips Hue light bulbs. So I chose this nightstand because it's super affordable. I think I paid like 30 bucks for it, and it's just the right size and build for this project. But one thing I did modify was the tabletop. It had a metal top and I swapped in a wooden top. But the first thing we wanna do is install this built-in power. So I've got this power strip, which is awesome because it's got your regular plugs, but also two USB ports. Since the drawer is made of metal, the easiest way to adhere this thing is with magnets. And these should set in about 10 minutes and we should be good to go. Now we want to add wireless charging. What I've got here is a Nokia wireless charger and the Nexus 5. So what I want to do is mount this charger right underneath the surface and because this tabletop is so thin, it's still going to be able to charge the phone. The indicator light should turn on and then, boom, our phone is charging. Okay, now let's get to the brains of this nightstand. We're adding NFC. So I've got this NFC tag, and what we're going to do is adhere it to the bottom underneath the tabletop so that when I tap this tag, it turns on my Philips Hue light bulbs. Now, the Philips Hue app on its own can't do this, so I've downloaded a third-party app called Lampshade.io, and what that lets me do is write a tag that completes that action. So I'll launch Lampshade, NFC, turn on our light bulbs, then I'll hold the tag to the back of the phone, it detects it, hit right to tag, and our tag is saved. So this will go right underneath the tabletop. Okie doke. So our smart nightstand is complete. Let's put this guy in place and take it for a spin. So we will tap our NFC tag, lights turn on, and then set it over our wireless charger and get this thing juiced up. And our smart nightstand is complete. Now, this thing really works because of these Philips Hue light bulbs. They're smart Wi-Fi connected bulbs, so when we tap that NFC tag, it pings the Wi-Fi network and tells them to turn on. In that app that we used, we've even got options for random. So hit the random button, and you never know what color you're gonna get. These lights are awesome. You can even program those NFC tags to automatically launch an alarm clock, a music playlist. There are so many customization options there. That sounds like it's a worthwhile investment in some NFC tags. Sure is. <laughs> All right, we're going to a quick break, but then we're talking about new tech gadgets that alert you about what's going on at your house even when you're not there. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to use sensors around your home to monitor light, motion, sound, and all that's gonna communicate directly with your smartphone. That's coming up next. Welcome back. We've been talking about the connected home. And in this next how-to, we're turning your ordinary appliances into smart appliances with high-tech sensors that are also affordable. 
You think of the home of the future and you think of the fully automated home of the Jetsons. Well, we're not there yet, but we can make our home a little smarter with some inexpensive sensors. Right here, I've got the Quirky Spotter, a $50 sensor, and a little more expensive over here, the Twine, a little geekier too, but both of these are essentially doing the same thing. They're going to measure light, sound, vibration, and temperature, and communicate that information to your phone. So first up, we're gonna show you how to use the Quirky Spotter to accomplish one of the most loathsome and common things in your home, the laundry. Now the first thing we're gonna do is program our spotter. It sounds like it's complicated, but they've made it pretty easy. There's an app you need to install called the Wink app. Open that thing up. You're gonna tell it your Wi-Fi login and password, and then this little bit of magic happens where it communicates that password information to the spotter by blinking on the device itself. So it's gonna do a countdown, start the countdown, and I'm gonna hold the screen over the spotter. There it goes. Yay, successfully connected, that's what we wanted, success. All right, the next screen we see here is a screen that shows off the four different sensors that are built into the spotter. Temperature, light, sound, and motion. Now for being able to detect when the dryer is done, I'm gonna make use of its motion detector. I'm gonna set up a new trigger. I'm gonna say that when it detects that movement is stopped, it's going to send me a notification. I'm gonna hit done, save, it says give the spotter a double tap, okay. Put that guy up on the dryer, let's give it a test. Let's load this thing up some laundry. All right, everything's rumbling around, drying my towels. Now hopefully if everything's working right, it's going to text me when everything's done. And there I go, it says that the motion has stopped. My laundry is done. Oh, towels. Life just got a little smarter. All right, for something with a little added flexibility, a little geek out capability, we've got the Twine. Now Twine is more expensive, it's $125 instead of $50 for the spotter. But with that, you get a lot of add-ons you can do. In this case, I've I purchased the add-on moisture sensor and I'm here in a basement, so what I'm gonna do is gonna have this program so that I can detect water in my basement before the whole thing floods. Now to set that up, I'm gonna go to the Twine website and create a rule set to tell this thing that whenever it detects water, to email me right away. All right, so setting up a rule is pretty basic here. We're gonna set it up so when it detects moisture in my basement, then I'm gonna have it email me, and here I can make my message, I can customize that, I can customize the subject line. Messages, your basement is, and then I can even fill in the automatic condition of it being wet or dry, and it'll let me know. Hit save to twine. It's gonna ask me to turn it over. There it goes. So now the information is being transmitted over to the twine, and then we'll get to test it out. All right, all done. Now let's give it a test. Now all I need to do is dip this down into the water. I can even see from the sensor itself here that it is getting a message. It's probably gonna turn itself into an email. Let's check that out. Checking for mail. Email message from my twine saying, your basement is wet. I now have an automatic sensor looking out for my basement moisture. So there you go, those are two ways to add relatively inexpensive sensors to your home to get you a little closer to that smart home Jetsons future. You know what else is cool about the Twine? It can tweet. What? Yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> well, we've shown you some innovative and inspiring ways to integrate technology into your home. But up next, we're gonna get really techy. We're gonna show you the ins and outs of what really makes this stuff tick. Hey everyone, welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Eric Franklin, and this is where we explain the details behind your technology. Now you may have seen the letters NFC on some of your electronics devices, and maybe you know what that is, and maybe you don't, but today I'm gonna explain it all to you. 
NFC is Near Field Communication. It's a communication standard for transmitting data to compatible devices. It starts when device one creates an electromagnetic field in order to communicate with device number two. However, in order to make that connection, the two devices have to be very close to each other. They have to be within a few centimeters or very near. The reason behind that is because NFC uses very short radio waves to make the connection. And by using short radio waves instead of long radio waves used by both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, NFC requires much less power to make a connection. So now you know whether or not you have NFC, but what's it gonna do for you? What are the practical applications of the technology? Well, there are three that you should know about. The first one is peer-to-peer. -peer. Now this occurs when you have two powered devices, both with NFC, and you wanna share data between them. Let's say a photo. So I have a nice photo of TechShop right here. I wanna get this phone close to the phone with the photo, make the connection, tap to send, and now it's sending. Now this is using Android Beam, which uses NFC to establish the initial connection, then it switches to Bluetooth in order to make your actual transfer. And now it's received. And there's a photo that I just sent. Pretty cool stuff. The second is one-way communication used by advertisers a lot. The NFC tag is programmed with the data the manufacturer wants to share. Now, the really cool thing about that is that the NFC tag doesn't run on its own power. It simply waits for an NFC device to get close to it. That device creates an electromagnetic field which powers the NFC tag with enough juice to share the data. It's really crazy, but really cool. And finally, mobile payments. For instance, Google Wallet allows you to use your smartphone instead of your credit card to make purchases at a store. You simply tap and pay and the appropriate amount deducted from whichever credit card you have set up. Right now, only a few retailers are using this technology, but hopefully we'll see more soon. That's it for this week's show. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any ideas for us or any feedback, you can reach us online. I'm at Donald on Twitter. And I'm at Sharon Back. Hit us up. We'll see you next time. On CNET's The Fix.